Either way. All right. All right, everybody. This is Sheets with uh, Michael Jensen, a.k.a. Brave Jay Jayhawk. And as you might see, I, I am dressed dressed for Survivor today in a, in a, in a jacket and tie. Um, some some have said it's because I'm going to Temple or went to Temple for Yom Kippur. But the reality is got to get nice and nice and dressed up for this podcast nowadays. And the Temple thing was just kind of a side thing. So as usual, uh, just a little bit of a disclaimer from the beginning is that um, is that we haven't talked about this beforehand, except for when we were going on. It makes us a little bit cleaner. And a couple of things uh, that I want to draw your attention to, which I didn't even put up on the screen yet, is the true DFS, uh, uh, which we call it a Im implied EV calculator, which I will put up a little bit later. We'll talk about that. So as usual, what we're going to do is I'm going to go over. I'll go first, I guess. I'll go over how I did last week um, and then my kind of summary of, of, of the week in general. And then Mike will do the same and then we'll head straight into this week. So last week, um, I guess I could do, I guess people have kind of have been used to me talking about particular pools. So we'll talk about it. So, so in the Circa pool in Vegas, I went down with, I got aggressive. I went down with two Pittsburghs um, for two of my entries. Um, that was kind of unfortunate the way that panned out. And I got through with one uh, with one kind of chalky Philadelphia um, that that's going to create a little bit of problems down the road. But that's just kind of the way it is um, in my big double pick pool. The one that's going to go doubles this week and then doubles in nine. I got through with some 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 miserable plays, which is good. I got through with some giants. Um, so I'm pretty well set up to to to, to play some place, do some business down the road. Um, in big single pick pools, I got through with some Cincinnati. Um, and I got through with some Atlanta from, from, from some LA chargers, which we talked about a little bit last week as well, just straight single pick pools. Um, and then we'll talk about this. As we get to it, but in that, in that nitrogen pool, which was down to seven, I was between Philadelphia and LAC and I ended up picking LAC which is really, really important and really, really big. We actually lost one player in that pool. They they took Detroit, which I thought was an okay play given who else they had picked, but but they lost. And like everybody else, I mean, I was a whole bunch of people took Green Bay and all throughout the universe, everybody's taking Green Bay. And I was that was like devastating what happened with with the Green Bay New England game for as far as my equity goes. I didn't play a single shred of Green Bay. And I can't I don't even want to calculate how much Green Bay losing <clears throat> cost me in winning cost me an EV. But as we get to the nitrogen thing, I'll, I'll just give you, a, you want, you want to, you want to froth at the mouth a little bit. You want to get excited about something. So imagine, well, I guess we'll get to this, but, but the people that didn't take green Bay this past week there and burn them for six took Philly. And there's not a single person that has Philly left in that pool. So, no, so, fantastic. So we, we could do fantastic. Some so anyway, so, so how'd you do this week? And then we'll, then we'll get into next week. Uh, I, I did great. Uh, Cincinnati was my biggest play. Um, I like the LA Chargers a lot as well, um, but I think I'd, I'd use them in some of my other stuff already. And then for Circa, I want to save them for Christmas slate just in case. Um, Cincinnati was my biggest play. That, that Very unfortunate um, how that game was won with you know, the, the two inju injury situation. Um, but to be honest, that really did play into part of like my mental tiebreakers why I like Cincinnati so much. I, when you like two teams, you, you, you got to pick. For, you know, there's got to be something that you can, you know, maybe get you over the edge. And you know, I thought there was a near hundred percent chance that her uh, that Burrow's playing the second quarter. And I said this out loud, and there's not a one hundred percent chance to it is. And unfortunately, that that's what happened. Um, went the hardest on Cincinnati. Um, I paired them with LA Chargers in one of my pools. Um, and then uh, I did lose one entry of Circa on Pittsburgh. Yeah. I got through with two on Cincinnati. Oh, you did two um, Cincy's. That's excellent. Great, yeah, great. Yeah, two job. Cincinnati yeah. and, and, and one Pittsburgh. The, the, the last pick was left up to me. My partner didn't care. Um, I decided to go two Chargers in one pool that we got through. And uh, I took Pittsburgh. Could, I, 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 Wish not just because of the result, but I wish I'd taken the Giants. No, no one picked them, which surprised me because no one's going to pick them on Thanksgiving anyway. Um, they were only slightly less favored than Pittsburgh was, but like ten times less picked or something. Um, but I also got through with uh, some Giants as well, and 
one of my larger pool of double picks. So a pretty good week. And then uh, the, the Green Bay game, I, I don't want to be known to oh. bemoan my, my bad luck, oh. but I, I, I knew with every fiber of my being that Green Bay was going to win that game. I know. And uh, I tried to anti-jinx myself in, in my group, group mm. uh, sweat thread. And, of course, as content as I was to lose it, they didn't have to make me wait to the final second of overtime Yeah, when my kids started fighting and screaming and yelling upstairs. Yeah. They could have just caught that touchdown with a few minutes to go in regulation. Oh, when, when, when he dropped but, it, go to the ground. Yeah. Right, right, right. But uh, so be it. I, you know, well, you know what? We'll, we'll, you know result, what? We'll, we'll get them. We'll, 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 you know what? We'll, we'll get them later because they won't have them in six. Yeah, so, and, so. and the, the important, regardless of the result, <laughs> uh, not not getting through without Green Bay was very important. Yeah. And 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 you're, people are going to realize that uh, in week six. All right. So as we go into this week again, I have Survivor Grid up here on the on the right, and just again. Uh, all right, I'll tell you what, I'm not going to go through all of this stuff. I remember I mentioned last week that I was going to stop doing the intros soon. I'll go half of it. All right. So, so again, what you're looking for are teams with good EV and low future value, meaning that you want a team that's going to be have a good winning chance as a function, though, of their popularity. You want the lowest, you know, a, a low popular, low popularity, high, high winning chance team and a team that you're not going to want to use in the future. You want you want to pick teams that fit a certain pattern. That will get to the end uh, in and depending on your pools that that could change. And we're going to talk as we get deeper and deeper into this stuff, like the difference between pools. Um, so so here's the I, I ranked it by EV over here. And again, if the popularity of your pool is different, which it probably will be, um, you could go to TrueDFS and access that um, that uh, that calculator where you can change the popularity or if you feel like changing the win percentage, again, I wouldn't recommend that. But if you want to change the win percentage, you can do that too. Um, and there you go. So I've rated everybody by EV. And we're going to just go through, like, you know, until I kind of get bored of, of the EV plays. Um, and we'll just kind of go step by step. So I'm, I'm going to start because I'm, I'm going to start with Buffalo, right? So, so Buffalo is, you know, they're like a minus 900 favorite. And they're going to be owned. Anywhere between, you know, 30 and 45 percent. I mean, depending on your pool. Now, it's funny, even in Circa, you know, I, I really didn't believe last week that so many people are going to take Green Bay. I thought that there were sharper people in the pool, that they'd be saving them for 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 what for Christmas. They'd be saving them for six or whatever it is. And nobody cared. They just plowed them in anyway, even in Circa. Um which is yeah, but then surprising. again, Pittsburgh was also 10% picked, which right, also right, surprised me that we right. had both those things coexist. Right, right. But what was surprising to me? So I think whatever it is, Buffalo is going to be really chalky. But, I mean, quite honestly, like there, there is no denying the fact that they're a very strong EV play. Okay, even with the 30% ownership, 35% ownership, their winning chance is just so high that there's no disputing that they're a high EV play. The only question is, um, well, there's, there's multiple questions. Is, is their future value high enough to overcome that high EV? Now, now, a lot of it depends on what else you got, you know, and what you, what you have planned and what your pool is. Cause normally I have, I have a feeling people are expecting me to come on and say, Buffalo 35% owned. Screw that. I, I, I don't want to do that. I could use them in seven other, seven other spots, something like that. But it, it kind of does depend. Like, and I want to talk, talk to you talk through one perfect example like i want to talk i guess i can't go through the actual pick i'm going to make but you take my nitrogen pool for example which i kind of alluded to it in, in in before so you have a situation like that where in week eight okay philadelphia is clearly going to be the best play and i'm literally the only one that's going to be able to take it, okay so i have extreme leverage on there but it even goes further than that because because no one's got Philadelphia, pretty much everybody's going to take Dallas, okay, like in eight. So so then what happens is, is this big spot in 14 where normally I would say I'm just going to hold Buffalo over 14. For me, Dallas is just as good pretty much to get the leverage on all. No one else has Dallas in 14. So I don't really need Buffalo as much in 14 on that type of pool. So for me, right. in that type of pool – I mean, Buffalo is a legit freaking option for me. And, and I, I would not, 
and again, depending on what, listen, here are the two weeks that I think determine whether you can play Buffalo. Like if you've got a plan for nine, okay, that then, then maybe you could play Buffalo because Buffalo is big and nine. Like, and remember we talked about Cincinnati as a play. Like if you burn Cincinnati, then you don't have them available in nine. So you probably want to have either Buffalo or since or, or Philly available for nine. So if you burn Philly already, then you probably need to save Buffalo for nine. And the other week I just spoke about is 14 because 14 Buffalo is going to be such a, such a big freaking dominant favorite of everybody else that it depends on what you think you want to do with Dallas and, 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 and that. So I'm not dismissing ball to Buffalo and depending on your pool, I think Buffalo can actually be a really good player this week. I, I agree. I, I put Buffalo in my like, you know, whatever category, whatever team gets to be a favorite like this, it, it's, it's hard to dismiss them as a viable option. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not going to take any Buffalo, but um, you know, you know, I, I, I considered it um, as a possible option, especially in my pool with double picks, maybe, you know, advancing forward and being super aggressive uh, next week, allowing myself, you know, assuming they win 100 percent of the time, which they don't. But assuming they do, then I would have 16 entries and I can have a lot more gambling in, um, entries and double picks next week. Gambling, meaning I don't include any Green Bay or L.A. Rams in them and allow myself more box opportunities. But it really just depends what you're looking at in those middle weeks. Um, and it's certainly week 14. Um, I just always assume these things go the distance. Yeah. Um, and I'm just going to – I just cross them off my list. Um, it's hard to, for me to say where I would rank them when I, when I go over my rankings later. But this, this is certain – Buffalo is certainly a, pl- a, a viable option opposed to two other teams I assume we'll get to next. Yeah. Uh, you cannot go wrong with taking a team that's not over 90% to win. You, know, you, you just you, – you can't – you really can't to, go that wrong. You know, to, that, to that point, I mean, while we are, we're talking about double picks, so, so I think both – both the double pick pool I'm in and the one that Mike's in, I mean, I think require double picks in five. And, and for me, I'm, I, I would, I'm not going to play them in, 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 in five. Um, uh, Mine starts in six. Oh, okay. So I'm not playing that. I, I could play them now in five, but I wouldn't do that. I, I, that that's something that you just hope people screw up and you have them available in 14. Cause for me in this particular pool, it's five. And then every week starting with nine till the end. You know what I mean? So, so you've yeah. got to really have, have some hammers uh, kind of late and, and, and hey, listen, I'm not playing bears and giants and Atlanta and Houston's and crap all these first four weeks so that I can then go just freaking burn Buffalo first week. And, yeah, you know, exactly. Right? All right. Um, okay. So let's, let's, let's get, let's get to the next group. So we could, we could do the, do these together or separate. So I guess there's a little difference between, I guess there really isn't that, that much. So let, let, let's go through the next three together. So, why don't you talk about Green Bay, KC, and Tampa like all together? Like, it, are mm-hmm. any of these guys viable for you at all? Anything more than the other? Do you like any of these guys? And if not, tell us. Tell us what's going on. Uh, Green Bay and Kansas City are in my uh, non-viable options. Uh, G- Green Bay is pretty simple. Like, um, there's a lot of other choices for this week with very similar win percentage. I'm not even looking at EV right now. I, I'm, I'm and, and I've alluded this in, in previous uh, weeks. I'm trying to build up as much future EV as possible and hope I get there to experience the possibility to realize that EV. I don't know what it will be. I might not even get there, but if I do get there and the season pans out the way I'd like it to, you know, basically the current spreads holding is the easiest way to put it. I'm going to have a lot of EV if I get to a certain point of the season. Um, and that involves holding on to Kansas City for as long as possible to, to, toward the end of the season and then slamming Green Bay next uh, in week six. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I wouldn't like I, I wouldn't say Green Bay's a bad pick, um, but make sure you know who you're going to pick next week um, first before picking Green Bay this week, because there's nothing sillier than getting through this week with green Bay and then getting to week six and be like, Oh, I have no idea who to pick. Well, then you shouldn't have took green Bay last week is the easiest answer to your problem. Um, for Kansas city, you know, there's just, there's just two games in, in, um, in the distant future that aren't so distant to where they will be sitting players down. Uh, teams will be playing in weeks 15, 16, unless there's, you know, you know, you know, you know key players are out. 
and you want the you want the cheese for weeks 15 16 i don't see any reason to use them prior to that um at least for my, my mapping purposes tampa bay i like um i have them beneath several other teams but by very very small margins um again this really this comes down to what you are going to have in very specific weeks and for tampa bay I'm looking at them as a very big need now for week 10. I know a week or two ago I said I like them as an all-in in five, but the way this thing works is you come up with a plan and then you see how the week goes, you map again, and if you need to audible, you audible. Um, two weeks ago I loved Detroit. I played none of them last week. Uh, last week I loved Tampa Bay for this week, and I'm going to play zero Tampa Bay this week. Um, make sure you know what you're going to do in the, in, in the other key weeks for Tampa Bay before picking them. And I would say that, you know, the same for some other teams we'll get to later as well. That's a really important thing that you, you, uh, that you, that you hit on that I want to expand a little bit more. So y- y- you mentioned that, um, well, originally we, we thought that one second, know, Originally, we thought that we were going to be going all in maybe on Tampa in five, but 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 reserve the right to kind of change your thoughts based on how things kind of go. And, you know, I have this discussion with 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 my partner quite a bit about the importance or lack thereof of of flexibility in the future. And it's it's a really, really big deal to have as much flexibility as possible in the future, just in case, you know, things change, you know, and, and, and you might think what's going to change. Well, you don't know. That's why you, that's why you, you plan for it. You, you plan for uncertainty sort of, you know, so whenever you have these, these, and we talk about this a lot, we say, okay, I could play this guy here and that leads to this path. Okay. But that leads to that specific path. You know what I mean? Like you're now locked in to this thing. As opposed to if you play this team, then, you know, you have this other thing. And, and we sometimes have this not debate where you, he says, well, you know, you want to you want to hold three different teams for week X. You know, you can only use one of them. Like, yeah, that's true. But you don't know exactly which one you're going to want yet. You know, so 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 it, to be flexible, I think, carries a lot of value. And, and, and so so, yes, it's important to map. It's important to plan. But. If you could make plans with kind of uncertainty, you know what I mean? Plans with contingencies, you know, that, 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 that carries a lot of weight because who, like you asked me at the beginning of the year, like, for example, like who would be the nuts, like in, in a really tough week eight, I think I thought Denver, you know what I mean? Like against Jacksonville and London was going to be one of my top picks uh-huh. before, before I realized that Philly was the best team in football, you know, before like, you know, before stuff happens, you know, and, and, and you, so you have to be sort of cognizant of, of, of the uncertainty that, that, that can happen. Um, uh, and I sort of agree with you with respect to those three teams. You know, I, I, I think that Tampa is, is better than, I think the green Bay and Casey are both miserable plays. If you want to know the truth, like if you have green Bay and use them now, I mean, that, I, I, I honestly don't even get it. If you want to know the truth. Um, you, you would, you would have to, you'd have to just give me some reason why you're not playing in six. If, especially considering they were burned 50% last week. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's, I, you know, you, you I don't think you could do that. Um, okay. And I do like Tampa Bay the best. One, one more point yeah. I'd like to make um, when you said uh, talk about flexibility and having multiple teams later to be able to choose from, but you can only pick one. You're never going to get to this hypothetical situation and be upset that you That's have true. too many teams to choose from. That's true. You're never going to be upset. And it's the other side of it's, the other, the other, the other side of it is not a problem either. If you don't get there, at least for me, unless the, unless it's so close to the end where I know exactly what my picks were like in circa the first year, two years ago, I got eliminated so deep in the season. I knew what my picks were. I mean, they, and they were clear and I would have won them both. So I, I came up, we got knocked out in Sunday night football, bang, Bengals, uh, Steelers, you know, I don't know, 11 and a half, 13 half point favorite. We lost that, and we would have won our next games that were over ten. And they were they were chalk picks. But when when I get eliminated, I delete everything. I delete the history of my picks. I don't look back at them because I I don't want to find a reason to get upset 
well, where it went wrong. If, if I did this, this differently in this one week, I'm very good about that. If it gets too far, then you already know what your path is. But you're never going to get knocked out in week 12 and, you know, get to week 18 and be like, oh, fuck, if I, uh, if I pick this team in four and, instead of that other team, I'd still be in. Because I I, you know, too many – it depends on it depends on your partner. My my partner is literally one of the he's my my partner is is literally the sharpest non professional gambler like I know. I mean like he has he has a job, but but he's the sharpest, literally the sharpest non professional gambler I know. And yet even him, he's like, man, I still can't believe we played Houston in week five in two thousand and eighteen instead. I'm like, oh, really? see, yeah, that's, <laughs> see, that's well, I think that's a mistake. I, I mean, no, I mean, mistake, I, I believe, but you know what? I don't even look. Mistake is yeah. a mistake. That's that's what it is. You know, it's part of. But what, sometimes you, know, you don't know. But the, the point I'm trying to make is, you don't know if it's a mistake anyway. You're picking. You're picking one path of the. There's a road. There's a. Floor, well, and that's the difference. One, between, one way the, or the, the other. difference between him and me again is like he doesn't play poker and I play poker. I know when I get my money yeah. in good that that's that that I can mm-hmm. I can stop the analysis right there. You know. Um, I, I can tell you. As long as you're not going to see how you do with what you would have done if you were still in, uh, you're going to be a lot that, happier than you are pissed when yeah, you're still in true. compared that's to when you're out, uh, when you have all these options. All right, and so believe let, me, it's a great feeling. All right, so let's do the next three, okay? Because the next three are very similar. All right. Um, so now you have San Fran, Minnesota, Jacksonville, and, and these three teams are – Low, you know, they have the following come their lower EV than Buffalo, like for example. Okay. And they have various degrees of of of, of future value. Okay. And, and and it's also a depend on your pool type thing. And this is this was a team again. You I'm gonna I'm gonna start with Jacksonville just because, right? So so Jacksonville is the team with the lowest future value of the three teams I just mentioned, I believe. And at the beginning of the year, I was like, okay, this is going to be obviously the pick. I want to slot into Circa in week five. But then, I, you know, th- th- then what happens is same thing happens with what I thought I was going to do last week with Detroit. I mean, Jacksonville's prob- probably going to end up being really chalky this week in Circa, you know, if, because just, this is what, just like Pittsburgh last week. Just like, but, mm-hmm. but, but worse because, because at least, ja- but Jacksonville's like a legit seven and a half point favorite. You know what I mean? Like they're, 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 yeah. they're going to be, they're going to be played, you know, because you look at like the other options, right? We talk about which teams do people want to save, you know, the Christmases and, and the, and, and, and the, and the Thanksgivings and the Jacksonville is the Jacksonville is, is one team that, that just, just doesn't fit any of those Minnesota on the other hand, right. They, they have not, not only do they have value in, 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 uh, on Christmas, uh, excuse me, on uh, Thanksgiving, but they do also have value in 13 if you don't want to go the uh, the Rams route. You know what I mean? Um, or maybe, listen, listen, maybe, 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 like we said, people like run out of teams in six, like all these people that don't have, the, 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 all these people don't have the backpackers in six, they might just say, you know what, I, c- I can't afford to hold the Rams anymore, you know, until 13. Ooh, at least I have Minnesota. So I'm just going to play the Rams in six and, uh, and I'll deal with, yeah. with, with Minnesota. 30. So Minnesota can be used, uh, you know, they're, they're going to be a pop. If they don't get used on Christmas, on Thanksgiving, they might, whoever's got them left is going to play them in 13. I imagine if they don't, the Rams anyway. So Minnesota has definitely more future value than Jacksonville on, on many levels. Um, and if you believe these EV numbers, I mean, there's to me would be no reason to play Minnesota over Jacksonville if it's a straight single pick pool or whatever it is, you know, um, just there's more chance to use Minnesota. EV is the same. And, and there you have it. San Francisco. Um, I look at their future value and I see 16 a, a, as, as, as one main shot. You they could also use them in a weird way in 18. If you hold them to there, um, maybe 12 or you know, again, but they're, I think they're better things to do in 12, but maybe not. So, but San Francisco has some future value as well. Uh, in Circa, they're sort of extra valuable in 16 because there are less teams you have to choose from in there. Like you pick one from Christmas and one from the group, you know? So that becomes like a, a, a quite kind of a sort of elite play there. So I go back and forth on the San Francisco play. Um, uh, I, I guess from a purist perspective, Jacksonville, again, if you believe these EV play, EV numbers, excuse me, these popularity numbers, as a function of EV, as a matter of fact, they have to be the best play because their future value is zero. 
Um, so there's a lot of different ways uh, to to look at. The, uh, there's actually one other team that I want to discuss. We'll get we'll get there. We'll get there. But the for for circa, I, I agree. Jacksonville is going to be very chalky this week. I, I'm I'm taking them anyway. I have two entries left. Um, my my favorite picks this week are San Francisco and New Orleans. Now I I have none of them left. Um, you I've know, you know, you know, you ruined my whole freaking thing. You know, sorry, I, said we were sorry. Gonna talk, I said we were going to talk I about know. San Francisco, Minnesota, Jacksonville. I was going to be saving the brave, J- the brave play, which we knew what was going to be. And, and, and then you go, all right, fine. So, guys, talk about the Saints. The I'm, reason I'm, I'm, I, and I, the no, reason, no, no, I'm scratching a, that from my mental list of things I have to do now. All right, go ahead. Talk about the Saints. The reason I had to bring it up, and I knew I was spoiling it, is because you, you, you have you, you got to you have to use San Francisco to can uh you got to cancel out san francisco to get to new orleans um and and and, you know for week 12 and this is this is for circus specifically because of the single game slate but if if you go and highlight the three games for thanksgiving three of the top six games are on thanksgiving um which leaves you know a very modified there's already a modified slate for the full slate in week 12 um San Francisco being the second best option after Miami and Indianapolis below it which means you have to pick one of these teams or somebody worse and the teams worse are worse. Kansas City, <laughs> Denver and Tampa and i mean why would you ever want to take one of these really strong teams as you know a 3 or 4 point favorite right um and th- this is this is the importance of First, you have to know the rules of your pool, and you have to play to the rules of your pool. Um, I could have waited on this, uh, certainly, um, but if you're if you're taking San Francisco this week and you have a, a modified week like we have for Circa, you better know who you're picking in twelve. <laughs> and you can say, "Oh, well, I'm just going to take Miami." Okay, well, what if you know what if two is out and they're only an eight, seven or eight point favorite, and they're still the highest picked team. Are you going to want to pick them then? Um, and, and that's really, that, that's where you need to start doing your thinking. Well, if they're I'll, 14 tell, point I'll, tell, I'll tell you, there. I'll tell you a secret. It's not, it's like, the, it's not even a secret. Like if Tua is back, Miami's going to be 70% on. I mean, like, be, oh, extremely high. <laughs> you know, extremely I don't want to make it at 70, but, 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 but they are going oh, yeah. stuffed that week. I mean, for sure. Um. I, I do like all of these teams, though. I made it very easy for myself because I have no no I have no New Orleans and I have no San Francisco, which made it a very easy chat week with my partner. Um, I think it's a much more challenging decision if you have all four of these teams. Even Tampa, I, I mean, I, I mean, I think the only reason I consider Tampa is because I don't have New Orleans or San Francisco. Sometimes it's it's nicer to have less options. I, I know I, we just said it's nice to have more options, but it's really nice to have more options late in the season because there's only so many weeks left. When you're this early in the season, you know, whichever way you guess is going to determine, you know, different paths you're, you're going to be forced onto later on down the road. And you can make a good educated guess, but – it really is a big – it could be a very – you don't know how big of a decision point it is, but I felt fortunate. I would have rather taken New Orleans or San Francisco this week, but, you know, our picks were so strong on those teams when we took them that I can't feel bad about it because I haven't used any of the key teams. And, by you know, and I didn't do that because I took New Orleans and San Francisco earlier in the year. So this is a really good opportunity to jump on one of those teams this week and gain some of – I'm not saying you lost EV by taking – by not taking these teams earlier, but if it's going to prevent you from taking Green Bay, Kansas City, Buffalo, Tampa Bay, or Minnesota, you are going to benefit greatly down the road by taking one of those teams now. Um, I was going to highlight the Saints particularly as a um... – as a double pick pool uh, type type team, uh, especially like right now. I mean, for me, oh, that's a great, that's yeah. So, so week five is double picks for me. And, and I think that's a good one. And, 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 but you know, you could make the case that, that 
you know, that you might want the Saints of in 15 in doubles, you know, um, at home against Atlanta. You know what I mean? That, that's uh, that's minus five or whatever it is. So, uh, no, I, I I disagree. I think it's the same logic that we use. In, in the they're gonna, that we that's the thing, New because they're going to be they're going to be really popular then. If it's they'll be very they'll be so available and so chalky. I, yeah. I, I mean, what well, they're going to be a few percent picked, yeah. um, you know, this week. It, it's so easy yep. to uh, to overlook them because yep. if you're looking straight down the line, you know, how do you even get past? Yeah. This, Jacksonville or Minnesota without thinking, oh, I don't need to go any further than this. This, that's, this is what people are doing. This, this, this is what people are doing in the double pick pool this week. They're 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 they're, they're just going to do it. They're going to they're taking the free square with Buffalo. Just they always do in this. I don't know why, but they are always going to do it. And then they're going to play Minnesota, I think, and they'll play they'll play some Jacksonville. Okay, but 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 I don't think they're going to get to the New Orleans. So so I'm uh, that that's I'm probably going to end up with some Jacksonville New Orleans over there. That's probably what's going to end up happening. But, no, and I do apologize for for ruining your moment. But since we all, since I did spoil it, I, I have it as four very viable options this week: Jacksonville, New Orleans, San Francisco, Minnesota. Do, do you more or less agree with with that group? I would, would add. You add would, would I you would add. add a I, I, again, not to not to reinvigorate myself as a chalk donkey, but I would. Uh, I would add Buffalo to that list. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I, again, me as well. I, I think I think the, the, those four are obvious, and maybe the larger that group gets, it's easier to get off of Buffalo. But yeah, I can't. I I, I couldn't. I would definitely not take them in, in a pool of double picks because what's you know what's the point? I mean, no, I'm, I'm I'm saying Buffalo. And this is this would be my my qualifier, qualifier honestly for single pick pools where you have a plan for eight, nine, and 14. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, cause mm-hmm. I think those three, cause, cause the Dallas in 14, I th- here, I'll put it another way. <clears throat> I think that you have to have either Buffalo or Dallas available for 14. Okay. That that's the way I'm going to put that. And, and if that's the case, if you want, if you, if you, if you are going to have Dallas available in 14, it's because you didn't play them in eight. And if you don't play them in eight, it's probably because you have Philadelphia available. You know what I mean? So, 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 so you got to know who you have. And, and then like, if you burn Cincinnati, for example, it makes nine sort of problematic. You know what I mean? Like if, if you, um, if you, uh, if you also burn Philly, for example, you know what I mean? Like, so if you burn Philly and Cincy somehow, then you're really going to want, you're going to want Buffalo there. So, so you really can't play Buffalo. So it really now, so it really does depend on what, what plans you have. Um, but listen, a, a buck nine is a buck nine, you know, <laughs> and, 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 that, and that's, and that's not, uh, and it's not as if, again, I'm going to want them any other week. I'm going to want Buffalo in either nine or 14. I think, you know, I, let's listen, things work out and whatever it is I could, Zig, 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 zag, and have them ready for eighteen. Hell, that that's always good too, you know. But but uh, I have a feeling that there there will be no buffalo in my lineups after fourteen at some point. So um, yeah, I, I mean, I think it's extremely unlikely I get past fourteen without using buffalo by then. But when you're making your picks each week and you're deciding between teams, another really good tiebreaker between using one of these elite team now, elite teams now, or thinking about them later. Just look at the look at the dark green at the end of, end of the line. Yep. If there's a lot of it, and and they're like a, and they're on track to be a possible one seed, that that's a good reason to hold that team. Yep. And right now, Philadelphia, especially because their matchups are spectacular for the last few weeks. But even Buffalo, if those teams are on track pursuing uh, the the one seed, those spreads you know, could get absolutely massive um, at, um, at, at the end of the season, especially if New England's out, if Cincinnati's out, you know, Chicago's out. These teams are just dead in the water. And Buffalo and Philadelphia, all they need to do is win to stay pace or hold on to the one seed. They're going to be, four, uh, you know, between 11 and 17 point favorites against against these teams. Um We've seen in previous seasons they're they're not those numbers now, but if if their opponents keep trending down, which they all which they have been, and they stay up, that's what the spreads are going to be. 
a uh, couple of injury things for people to just, I, I think, you know, to, to, to put in the back of your heads that it's going to drive some survivor pool stuff uh, is, is if, and when the return of Dak Prescott comes, uh, cause I don't know exactly what, what these spreads are presuming as far as, you know, uh, when he's coming back uh, the return of, of Deandre Hopkins, he's supposed to come back to Arizona in seven, which uh, might impact their popularity and their viability in nine. Um, which is again that week nine is a is is kind of a kind of a <clears throat> tricky week um, it, it, in in some variations, and then um, and then Deshaun Watson coming back at some point, most specifically for possibly a very very chalky week thirteen um, if he comes back in time for that, and they look good going into that. So um, those are just things you know that we'll 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 touch on as it as it as it comes. Like for example, there's like there's like uh, like if you don't if you somehow burn Green Bay, and I'll talk about this next week. Like if you if you burn Green Bay against our advice, and like this, I get this a lot. People are like, uh, listen, I know you're going all in on Green Bay, but 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 what if I burn Green Bay? I'm like, well, what are you watching the first five weeks? You're like, what what have you been what have you said? And and then and then like when I tell you that oh, if you burn Green Bay, maybe you go want to go play Cleveland against New England or something like that. They're like, huh? Well, I mean, this is not this is not this is your fault, not mine. I mean, I would have preferred you take Green Day, you know. But 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 why don't you go play Cleveland maybe against New England and to try to steal somebody so that you when you won't use them in thirteen when Deshaun Watson comes back to your pop or something. Anyway, um, yeah, that's it. okay. That's actually the one note that I didn't write down that you that I just I just remembered. If you used Green Bay this past week, then San Francisco is a good way to make up for it in week six um, because then you don't have to take Tampa Bay or the LA Rams, which enhances the, uh, the viability of taking new Orleans in five. But, but you could, I mean, listen, but you could play, if you didn't burn them, you could play Rams in six and Vikings in 13. Like if, if you if could, you could, but if you, if you want to open up, you know, multiple options, because right. green Bay is going to have, you know, right. And they, they have other direct spots right now. I mean, even week week seven, week eleven. Well, I, I just meant if you or... burn Green Bay. You know? <laughs> oh, oh, I'm, I, that's right for the Rams. I, I mean, yeah, yeah. and that, that that's true because the Rams. Um, yeah, I, I guess really, if you don't use the Rams next week, yeah, I guess their 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 opportunity is I guess is is closing up. They haven't looked particularly well, but you're, yes. you're I guess yeah, I guess the Rams only have are down to like two attractive looking weeks on on for for regular for yeah. single I, single I, I, I wonder i wonder what's going to be in christmas i i want I, I wonder who's going to be the four point favorite like because i can't think of one i think they're all going to be like pick them by that i don't know it's oh they're be... fantastic aren't they they're all they're <laughs> yeah. all within three it's we didn't do it this week but my partner and I each week have we've tried to guess each week what the most picked team would be on Christmas. And, and, and it, it, it changed fun. the first three yeah. weeks we did. It's, it's very hard to guess because all eight of those teams yeah. outside of Arizona are going to be picked numerous times leading up to with Arizona right. being the, the team that will be, pe- will be picked the least. Right. Uh, it, it's definitely an interesting thing to consider when making your picks because you are going to, you got to assume you're going to get there and it would be nice to have the least available team remaining because the, Outside of injuries, the spreads are all going to be pretty narrow. So, if you're on, if you're on a, you know, all alone sitting on one team, that, that's a pretty good play. That's going to be a real. That that, that would be the best pl- place to be in, on Christmas, almost regardless of spread. All right, so I'm going to. Uh, uh, I think that was uh, we did we did a good job. I think in summary, I think it's pretty safe to say that if you guys want to root for us, it's going to be some degree. See, I think I think if Jacksonville wins, net net, we're gonna be happy. I think if um, I think if Buffalo wins, probably I don't know between the two of us. I still don't know what I'm doing with it. It might I might end up being net net neutral on Buffalo at the end, uh, but I know that 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 Michael will be rooting against Buffalo, and then yeah, and then, I'm, I'm I'm taking I'm taking none of it. This would be yeah. again, this would be a much more challenging week for me if I if I hadn't taken New Orleans or San Francisco. Right, mine are pretty easy. I don't yeah. mind saying my picks this week because the, the I, I prefer the other ones. I'm taking Jacksonville, Minnesota, but I prefer New Orleans and San Francisco. Yep. Uh, those are my favorite picks, but I I can't take them, so yep. I'm taking the other my other my my third and fourth favorite. 
All right, you're the man, Mike. Thank you so much, and uh, we will uh, we'll get back to it next week. Good luck, everybody. Thank you. Eric. See you next week. Bye bye. Okay.